But this only takes us so far. In our minds, when we receive the gospel, we are making a mental assent that God has done this thing, and that is then received by us. But Paul speaks of another Jesus, implying a false Jesus in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. He further speaks of a different gospel in Galatians chapter 1. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, here it is, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. One speaks of a false Jesus, meaning a Jesus who is ineffective in atoning for man's sin. The other speaks of a false gospel, meaning that what is presented cannot save. Together, these call out for a Jesus who is both truly God and truly man, and for a salvation which comes from God alone. In offering for sin to restore the peace, I come to petition my God at his holy altar. Until I do, the enmity will never cease, but knowing he will forgive, in this I will not falter. He, the holy altar, and he is the door and the tent. Christ the Lord is slain. His life ebbs away. In that exchange, God's wrath is spent. Harmony is restored and has come a new day. Innocent and pure, no fault of his own, the death truly touches my heart. But in this exchange, I am clearly shown that only through death can there be a new start. Thank God that another has died in my place. In his death, I can again look upon God's face.